I just had these delicious oatmeal cranberry cookies, organic. Them jobs are good. Them jobs are slamming. Them jobs are slamming. Them jobs are slamming. So um, I got to go get me some more. And just one time, I'm not going to tell you all where they are because I got to get me some more. And as soon as I get my fill of them, they'll let you know where they're going to get them. But I got... Something that's slamming also. This is slamming. Crack tea. Crack tea done by Sister Trelawney. <laughs> yeah, Sister Trelawney. This is her book. This is on our story right here in Savannah. This is slamming right here. This is great. Now, I'll let you know. Sister Trelawney um, talked about mentioned day clean journeys inside there. Our tour was a part of her inspiration for her to do this right here, for her to do the story of us. Now, I have respect for her because she acknowledged it. Because see, sometimes folks don't acknowledge that. So day clean journeys, and then later on she had me work um, on her committee for her dissertation, and we just shared some points with her, and bam, she, she took it to another level. She interviewed people here in this community, in this city right here. This is important. This is important. Because I try to figure out often, why do I remember certain things? And other people who are older than me, who lived right here, because I was a child and when some things were happening, or some things I researched myself. And I try to figure out why other people don't remember. That's why this is important right here. This is important. See, because other people applaud and hold up their histories. They hold up their history. They let it be known. I'll show you what's so crazy. I got respect for the culture. The culture. Oh. See, some of y'all don't know the culture I'm talking about. There is a place had the nickname. It was called The Culture in Statesboro, Georgia. That place is called Georgia Southern. Yes, at one time, Georgia Southern was called The Culture. That was the nickname for it because for agriculture. So it was called The Culture. And what happened here in Savannah, Georgia, there was a place called Armstrong. Oh, I should, I should have prefaced this to say that some of y'all going to get mad with me about this because some of y'all going to get offended because I'm talking about some history that most people don't realize. And so when I bring it up, people get stunned by this. As I said, people applaud their histories. They talk about their history. They put it in your face. It doesn't even matter if it is disrespectful to some of you. It doesn't matter. That's why I can't get concerned about some of this. That some people get put disrespectful stuff out there. The culture, that is Georgia Southern, which is now the Armstrong campus, at one time they had downspouts, downspouts, you know, which basically come down the chutes that go out the water when it's raining, like now it's raining. They had downspouts at the Armstrong campus, or when it's Armstrong State College and Armstrong State, Armstrong State University and Armstrong um, Junior College. When it moved from downtown Savannah, we moved out there on Abercorn, they had downspouts that had on them the name of a person by the name of Nathan Bedford Forrest. Now, some of y'all out there saying, who is that? Who is that? He's a buckra. Oh, excuse me. In Gullah, buckra means European or Caucasian. Um, now, some other people saying, wait a minute. You said Nathan Bedford Forrest? Some people saying, wait a minute. In Memphis, Tennessee... They were trying to remove his statue from the parks in Memphis, Tennessee. Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yes, he was a Confederate. Yes, Nathan Bedford Forrest. The downspouts at, which is now a campus called Georgia Southern, uh, I have to say this, they are no longer there. They are no longer there. They were removed. They were removed. But what happened, the downspouts that when this was Armstrong, state university or college or junior college the downspouts had on the downspouts the name of nathan bedford force this confederate his name was on there now no one knows exactly I mean, historians none of us know how that occurred we don't know we doubt that it came from the armstrong house but someone who did the work for, created those downspouts they had on there the name nathan bedford force so you know, his background he's a confederate cavalryman he is tied to the Fort Pillow Massacre, where they kill African soldiers. Some of your ancestors who are out there probably listening. Um, Nathan Bedford Forrest also sold African people. Yes, he made his money. He made a lot of wealth off of selling human beings, African, African people. 
your ancestors, selling your ancestors. Nathan Bedford Forrest also let y'all know this was a rapist. There are some African, older African people right now, some of them who are artists, who go and talk about that he is a part of their family line, their familial line. And they go and talk about not with pride, they said that he raped, they say my great grandmama. This what some of them go and talk about, discuss this. These are some artists, some writers. They're going to discuss it because, again, he felt that because he had, had had these people as his property, he could do what he wants. So, yes, he raped African women. So there are some African people out there right now. See, some of y'all didn't understand why all this feeling, this sentiment was going on about what was happening in Memphis. It was layers to the story. That's why I say sometimes some of us know some background. We don't always go and put it out there fully. But then, again, the people are saying this man sodomized, molested, raped African girls and women then had offsprings that were still put in captivity. Still some, they were still property. So he had down spouse at Georgia Southern, no, excuse me, Armstrong, that had his name on it. Why well, throw that out there to say this? See how they applaud their history? They make sure, no matter what. Now somebody's saying, Jamal, you're not telling the full story. Nathan Bedford Forrest also is the first grand wizard of the KKK. Wow. Nathan Bedford Forrest. Grand Wizard of the KKK, right there, founded in Pulaski, Tennessee. Nathan Bedford Ford is the first Grand Wizard. Also, Nathan Bedford Ford sold African people. Nathan Bedford Ford involved in taking the lives of African men who sought freedom. Nathan Bedford Ford fought against this nation, the United States, saying for homeland. That's what he did. And they applaud him. So even today, his name is still ringing with great joy in the lives of some of them, in the minds of some of them, in some of their homes. They still, they talk about this. So here you go, African people, you ignore your story altogether, where other people applaud their stories, no matter how horrendous it is. Yeah. That's why Cracky Teeth is important. It's important for you to know your story, because I keep saying, why do I remember some of this? And others don't talk about it. I remember having the bottles and going and get you know the, the bottle, getting you know a nickel from off of the bottles, turn them into the stores. I remember getting the bottle tops and going to the movies with the bottles and the bottle tops. Going to the movies right on West Broad Street. I remember that type of stuff. But see, next generations, generations afterwards, don't even have a clue. They don't know anything about that. They don't know about having the best ice cream in the entire world at the Star of uh, Delhi right there. For the Star Theater. People don't know about the sausage sandwiches that were sold at the Star Theater. They don't know about they don't know about the bank. They don't know. Oh, excuse me. Savannah being a tourist city, Savannah had a black owned hotel and movie theater called the Dunbar. Right there on West Broad Street, that's now I-16. People don't know about that, and next generations don't know about it at all. So they think that we've never achieved and never done anything in this city. Cracky T tells a part of that story. Where others, again, applaud this story, no matter how horrendous it is, they applaud the stories. They make sure it's known. It's put in your face every day, even on the money that you see. The streets that you go down, Bull Street. Some of y'all know I detest Bull Street for the name where it comes from. But anyway, other people know something else. And I threw this story out there, and I said it. People still ask me about it. Florence Martis, Florence Martis. Let me tell you about African people. That I want to say some of y'all who are going to get offended with this, come on our side. Come to our community and ask us. Don't come with your fanciful tales. Florence Martis, African people such as Dr. Abigail Jordan and others, they call her a lady of the evenings. Essentially, um, she was a prostitute. So some people laugh and say, Savannah got a monument and a boat named for a prostitute. Savannahs, but here go, they uplift their history, their story. They minimize your story, and you say nothing about your story. You, have, you feel ashamed about your own story. Now understand that others support their stories and create mythologies. See, most of us don't know Savannah history, we know Savannah mythology. And we feed it to other people, the mythologies. And they celebrate their own mythologies, and you don't celebrate your own history. History is different from mythology. This is a part of your story right here. You need to grab a copy of this and listen to some of those people out there like Vaughn and Good Walker, Jamal Ture, Queen Quet. You need to listen to some of uh, Sister Glenda. You need to listen to some of those people who are putting out Father Hoskins. 
Dr. Charles Elmer, you need to listen to some of them who give you the history, not the mythology, and who give you foundation. 